All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about uh, types of studies and statistics. And there are a couple types of studies that I want to go through, and then you can answer some questions today and uh, complete an IXL. Remember to check for the time for your review session also. And um, just a quick reminder that the review session uh, next week is very important that you attend. Uh, as we'll be going through all of the released questions for the exam and uh, how to work the exam using your computer. So it's important to attend and also uh, bring a computer if you uh, have one with you, either your own laptop or the laptop from school to that review session. All right, so types of studies and data collection methods. So number one, an observational study. This type of study attempts to understand a cause and effect relationship, but the researcher is not able to control how the groups are assigned or the treatment each group receives. The researcher also usually attempts to minimize any influence the study may have on the subjects. So an observational study is just that you observe. So you watch people doing what they already do. You don't assign them to a group that maybe they wouldn't be in uh, regularly. You don't tell them to do a certain thing or take a certain treatment or not. You just watch what they're already doing. In an experimental study or an experiment, this study also tries to understand cause and effect, but by doing that, the researcher selects groups from the population and then assigns a treatment to those groups. The researcher also commonly uses what's called a control group that receives a placebo. So there's typically a treatment group that gets like what you're testing. So if you have like this new drug that you want to test to see if it works, then um, you'll have a group that gets the new drug, the treatment, and then you'll have a group called a control group that gets the placebo, which would be like a fake drug, like something that doesn't uh, do anything. So that way you want people not to know which group they're in so that you can tell um, if there's really a difference or not. So again, the treatment group is the group that actually receives the real treatment and the control group or the placebo is the group that receives that fake treatment. Um, next is a simulation. A simulation is a way to model a random event in a statistical study. So for instance, like if, if we know something has a 50% chance of happening, then we could flip a coin instead of actually going out uh, to a store. Door. If we know the chance of someone buying gas at the gas station is 50%, then we could just flip a coin instead of actually going to the gas station and finding each person um, to see whether they buy gas or not. So we're simulating what's actually happening. If we know, let's say, that something happens four out of every six times, then we could use a die and we could roll it. And if it rolls on one through four, that counts as it happening. And if it rolls on a five or a six, that counts as it not happening. So a simulation is a way to model, to simulate something actually happening. A census, we just had the 2020 census. Um, a census is a study that tries to measure the entire population. So it doesn't try to take a sample. It actually tries to take the entire population. That would be a census. And then sampling is what we usually do. Um, it's a study where you select a subset of the population, so a small group of the population, and you want to use that sample to estimate about the entire population. So like if you want to know about all of Lincolnton High School, you might take 50 students, you might try to get a sample of 50 students, and then whatever their results were, you would say that's true for all of Lincolnton High School. So next, uh, what you want to do in 6 through 10 is to choose the type of study that is most likely to be used. And it says each one is used once. So there's five studies and there's five questions. So you should be able to kind of eliminate some in a couple of your answers. And we'll move further down to an experimental study. So this is a, a real study here. It says a 17-year-old student designed a science fair project with 72 mice 
that were randomly assigned to three groups, either hard rock music, Mozart, or no music at all, which was the control group. The mice in the first two groups were exposed to music 10 hours a day. Three times a week, all of the groups were timed as they ran through a maze. An analysis of the results showed that the 24 mice in the no music group averaged about a five-minute improvement in their maze completion time, while the Mozart mice improved eight and a half minutes. The hard rock mice actually got slower, an average of four times slower. Another interesting fact, the student had to start his experiment over because all the hard rock mice killed each other. None of the classical music mice did that. So describe the independent variable. That means what is the treatment? So what are they giving to each um, of the mice? What are they giving to them? What's the treatment? And then the dependent variable is the variable of interest. So what are we interested in knowing? So the treatment affects what? What are we looking at to see what has changed at the end? So which group would be the treatment group? And which group would be the control group in that experiment? All right, let's go to the next one. Now, a researcher wanted to study the effects of the amount of time of physical exercise and the student's academic grade point average for a statistics class. The researcher found that the students that exercised also slept more as a result of their exhaustion from exercise and couldn't just attribute the increase in GPA to physical exercise. So like we thought maybe if you exercise more, your grades will go up, but for some students, they exercised more and um, they were so tired that they fell asleep and therefore maybe their grades didn't go up. Okay. So what is the independent variable? That means what are we looking at in the study? And that would be the amount of time that they exercise, right? And then the dependent variable is what are we interested in? We're interested in their grade point average, right? Whether it's going up or down. The confounding variable is one that we're not, is not in our study, but we, that could make a difference. And something that could make a difference was how tired they are, right? The amount of sleep that might mess up our study. And that way our study is not accurately going to show whether uh, exercise gives them a higher grade or not. So how could the researcher maybe use an observational study instead of an experiment? So what could they do in an observational study? What could you go and ask uh, students that might give you the same results? Okay, next. Uh, some additional study types, a blind study means that the patients or the subjects do not know which treatment they're getting, whether they're getting the placebo, the fake drug, or whether they're getting the actual treatment. And that's a good thing. You don't want, you don't want people in your experiment to know which treatment they're getting, because if they think they're not getting a drug, then they may not think they're going to improve. And if they actually think they're getting the drug, they may improve just because they think they're getting it. Um, a double blind study is where the people that are actually giving the uh, treatment and the people receiving the treatment, neither one knows. So like the doctors maybe don't even know what treatment they're giving you and the patient doesn't either. That way they'll treat everybody the same, regardless of whether they're getting the real or the fake treatment. And the placebo effect is when is kind of the mental effect. It's where like you have a headache, you think you're taking Tylenol, all of a sudden your headache goes away, but really you were just taking the fake treatment. So it wasn't the Tylenol that caused your headache to go away. It was the fact that you thought you should feel better. So therefore you felt better. So that's the placebo effect. Um, so if you'll read this scenario, about a researcher in motion sickness medicine and explain which type of experimental study was used in this and then read the second one and look at what type of study was used in the migraine headache medicine. Okay, so that is all for today's um, notes on types of studies. What you'll do next is you're going to go to IXL Algebra 2 
and you're going to go to identifying a biased sample. It is uh, statistics FF.1. Identifying a biased sample. And to identify a biased sample, we're basically saying biased means that it favors a certain outcome, that it's not good. We want our samples to be unbiased, meaning like if we want all the people in class, then we want to make sure we randomly select people. We don't just pick our favorites. So that if we picked our favorites, that would be biased. So let's look at a couple. Without looking, Kenny took three flashcards out of his box of flashcards. Is this sample of the flashcards in the box likely to be biased? And no, it's not biased because he didn't look and he just randomly picked three cards out of the box. Now, Jordan sent an email to everyone planning to attend the Hearst family reunion and gave them the chance to vote on their reunion location. Seven of them took the time to email back with their votes. Is this sample of the people planning to attend likely to be biased? Well, she sent an email to everybody and only seven of them replied back. So what about the people that didn't reply back? Where will, where do they want the location to be? We don't know. So therefore, this should actually be biased because we're not getting the results of everybody. We only got the results of the people that responded. So Steve surveyed 225 children under 16 in the town. Is this sample of people in the town likely to be biased? Well, if you're wanting people that are in the town, but you're only surveying children under 16, that's going to be biased because children under 16 are going to think differently than maybe older adults or even young adults or anybody else. So you need, if you want to know about all people in the town, you need to get some children, you need to get some adults, you need to get some older adults. Um, so this is definitely going to be a biased sample because it wants all the people in the town, but it only surveys children. So that is a good example there. A couple examples of what's biased and what's unbiased. Remember, unbiased is good. It means you'll get a good sample. If it's biased, it means it really doesn't represent your population. So it's not good. It's not a good sample. All right, so if you'll do that today, that'll be your work for today and your notes for today. And uh, you'll turn those in on Canvas. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the review session. Okay, um, and you can talk to anybody to try to figure out the times for that. So I'll see you soon and uh, we'll continue through this statistics unit here uh, tomorrow. All right, have a great day.